session for today is troubleshooting Windows. Fun, oh fun. So our main objectives is going to be to identify the common issues that come up with Windows and common troubleshooting applications to use when diagnosing the issues, describe how to resolve issues using the appropriate CLI commands or admin tools or even your system utilities themselves. Lastly, name which CLI command or administrative tool or system utility you're going to use for a given scenario. As we know, software is very, very complex depending on, on a given uh, actual software. It could be multifaceted or just a simple one, but I haven't seen many simple ones out there lately. Additionally, there are many places where things can go wrong. This makes the operating system one of the most confusing components to troubleshoot for some individuals. Obviously with a proper plan and action and good backup, good backup, trust me, even restore points and backup are very, very useful because sometimes if you get that cryptoware where it encrypts your whole hard drive, you're gonna have to re re come back from an actual good backup. You're not gonna be able to restore from a given actual point, right? Um, there is some constant uh, common system symptom, sorry, that uh, we know, which is the blue screen of death. We have a failure to brute, improper shutdown. We have spontaneous shutdown and restart. The device itself fails to, to even detect or some other issues that we may have. Uh, so obviously there's a plethora of issues, including DLL, the dynamic link library files. Those are the files that the actual program uses to be able to run. So similar to, you can say almost like a driver for the actual hardware that these DLL files are the files that it uses to be able to help the operating system to run it. You have also services, as we saw, there are services depending on the actual application, they may have services within it. And if they fail to start, it may not work. For example, if you have your spool services down, what you think is not gonna work? You have your spool services down. Spooler, you said? I can't hear you. Spooler. Spoolers, if your spooler service is down what are you not going to be able to do if it's the host won't not be able to print if it's the server that means no one can print towards that server it's fully responsible for printing jobs correct so uh daniel help us out here with slide number four oh actually no never mind that's what i just said Continue on. So, here are your plethora of issues that we have, as I said a moment ago. You have all these to deal with and many more. These are just scraping the surface. But we most know the majority of these to understand what they are. So, your blue screen. Here you go, Daniel. Help us out here. Slide six. Whoop, uh, let me see. All right. A blue screen error happens when processes running in kernel mode encounter a problem and Windows must stop. It is also known as stop error or blue screen of death, BSOD. A stop error at the top and the specific number of error at the bottom will help with this troubleshooting. Okay. Now, a lot of people tend to ignore this because they hear that's the blue screen of death. We strongly recommend writing down those codes because those codes, if you go look them up in Windows, tell go to Google, tell them Windows blue screen of death error and put the exact error. I'm willing to bet that they have a description of what it is. That only knows why they couldn't just put it in plain English here. So don't ask me. <laughs> there's there's got to be obviously something in there. And most likely another problem that we see here is not the show. Who is the one that's getting the problem? Not the shell. This Who looks is... like the kernel. Because it's talking about Correct. the kernel. The kernel is the one that's dealing with it. So it's already in the machine language. So it's dealing with machines. So you can obviously rule out that is usually that it is some type of software issue. It could be that 
obviously the software is giving problems to the kernel, but many times if it's this far, it's gotta be something with the actual S or your memory or something is actually failing. It is very descriptive when you go and look up those actual errors. Next slide. Slide number seven, Christina. Tools to troubleshoot uh, blue screen of death. There are many window tools that can be used to fit, help find a solution to a problem with the system. Many technicians use a six step troubleshooting process to help them solve PC related problems. To solve blue screen stop errors, use the following tools to examine the system and solve the problem. Use the web to search the error code. Check event viewer after restart to look for errors. Windows updates to apply patches to the OS. System restore if unsure which changes to undo. Memory diagnostic tools to check memory. Check this to check the hard drive for errors. Thank you. So as I stated before, always search the error code. Don't ignore it. Ask the user to take a picture because sometimes they don't even tell you it right. Take a picture, send me the picture if you, if you can't see uh, it yourself. Obviously, a picture says a thousand words more than the user because usually the user will wind up giving you something wrong or letter missing or something is not uh, complete. So I would strongly recommend that. Event Viewer, as we just, the, uh, discussed before, has a plethora of information in there. It'll give you the informational issues or it'll give you an exclamation mark and or whatever it is that it is seeing. Even when you have a BSOD, it will register inside the Event Viewer. Your Windows updates and patches of the OS itself is self-explanatory. There might have been an issue, maybe a patch that you might have applied could be the issue and or you may be missing a, a patch. We don't know exactly may be the issue. Uh, any questions overall on this slide or doubts on what the tools are and how we use them? Okay, next slide. So after a restart, a Windows error message, as we said, appears for information. Make sure you undo any recent changes. If they installed a new application, uninstall it. If they install a brand new card, uninstall it. Whatever it is that they might have done recently, get rid of it. That is the first thing you should do. Sometimes these users tend to install things the wrong way. That's one of the reasons we try to avoid them having access as administrators or even power users to do things inside these computers. Uh, <clears throat> you want to also check the archive messages in the archive, I'm um, sorry, in the action center. Anybody know or remember what is the action center? I think that's a Windows 10 term referring to what to do on the computer, like a notification system. Action center is a little flag that tells you that there is a problem. It's a little flag that comes up next to your actual time. And it will, if you hit it, it'll tell you exactly what it is. You're missing maybe a, the latest virus, your firewall is disabled, whatever it seems to have found, it'll put that little flag icon right next to your actual clock or whatever it is that's on your uh, taskbar here, all the way on the right side you usually see that little flag appear. You click on that and, and, and or go into your control panel's action center and it should come up if it's not, if it's already archived, it'll come up in there. Questions on the BSOD and or current slide. Oops. Next one. Lazaro, help us out here. Slide nine. All right, number two, symptom failure to boot. When a computer fails to boot, it is necessary to determine whether the problem relates to hardware or software. In this screen, the OS hasn't even started, so the problem is hardware related or log boot order in the BIOS. Yeah, this is one of the things that I told you guys last week. Operating system not found, 
can be that the BIOS is trying to boot up with something else instead of your hard drive. So I've seen it many times where somebody forgets the USB in the actual computer, they turn it on and it gives them this screen. You'll be surprised the amount of times that happens. That's one of the reasons why we also try to change the boot order when we're finished and make sure the hard drive is one of the first ones, usually. Not a must, but I like to do that just to avoid the ID 10T errors. Questions or doubts? Next slide. The hard drive doesn't boot because the OS is corrupt, then obviously we can access it with the Windows recovery environment. Everybody remember what's the Windows recovery environment? The WinRE? I believe that's the separate media, right? Because if it doesn't boot, you have to put like a CD or USB and then you try to repair it. Yeah, you can create a Windows boot or a Windows recovery uh, boot diskette now allow you, if you have a DVD, to go in and obviously repair the OS. It will mo most likely just recopy everything in there and help you. It has the advanced boot options and you have the system repair disk. Must be created before you could actually troubleshoot these uh, problems. You could obviously go to any other computer that has Windows and create a system repair disk. It doesn't have to be the exact same PC. <clears throat> Any questions? Doubts. <clears throat> Your Mac OS offers a power recovery tool called the OS X recovery that enables to uh, rebuild the Mac with a boot and a key combination called Command R at the boot access. It'll actually bring up the actual thing. So the button is Command, it's not the Windows button. Linux also offers two boot managers, which is Grub or Lilo and Stitch. Grub is the most common. If Grub gets corrupted or deleted, Linux obviously won't start. It'll show that you're missing the Grub error in the boot. Any questions or doubts on either Mac OS or Linux? Next slide. Carlos, help us out here. Slide 12. A rogue system will begin automatically shutting down and or restarting while in use. While it could be indicated for hardware problem, it can also indicate a setting misconfiguration problem. Hardware that can cause improper shutdown errors, memory, motherboard, CPU, video card, system overheating, when these errors occur, check Event Viewer, look for hardware failure, apply any Windows patches, use memory diagnostics, and ooh, how do you pronounce that? Memory diagnostic and check this slash R. Check this, okay. Um, if overheating is expected, go into BIOS setup and check the temperature of the CPU. Should not exceed 38 degrees. Celsius, yeah. Keyword Celsius there. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't it be more efficient to have a application to check the temperature, like SpeedFan, for example? A rogue system will begin automatically shutting and restarting while in use. Are you sure I should boot up in Windows? Oh, I see now. Okay. It's going to shut down by the time I get in there, right? We're trying to minimize <clears throat> anything that's being used of the memory, the motherboard, CPU, video card, all these I want to minimize. If I go into BIOS, it's going to go into the lowest settings possible to bring up the BIOS. Usually 256 colors is the highest it goes. Minimize the memory, you're going to minimize the video card, all that will be very, very low use, giving you the opportunity to go and check. And a lot of these UEFI BIOS nowadays automatically let you see the, the temperature with a GUI interface and 
they let you obviously adjust the fan speed or check the actual uh, motherboard itself, to do some diagnostics. Questions or doubts and proper shutdowns. Next slide. Endless shutdowns and restarts. Obviously, if you're caught in an endless cycle, boot in safe mode where you can change the window setting where it automatically restarts. If you come in here, you can see here, you can actually set the settings for the automatically restarts and control it. You can make it wait before it actually shuts down. What what caused this to happen? Like a virus or some real corrupted like information? That is for you to find out and dig. There is no direct association there. You know something's creating it. You need to dig. Depending on the issue itself. That endless shutdown and restart. So most you could do is try to stop it from from restarting and, and coming into, into safe mode and trying to make it long laster. So, sorry, make it stay longer up by forcing it an actual uh, clock to be longer. That'll also obviously allow you to maybe to go into the CMD, the CLI, uh, and maybe do a shutdown minus A, gives you a little bit of more time. And then obviously you're gonna have to try to diagnose exactly what the fish issue is. Be unable to, Diagnose the best bet is obviously to go into safe mode or into recovery, uh, the last known good boot. There's a plethora of issues that can create an endless shutdown, not one given thing. Hence, why we stated earlier that unfortunately, uh, most of these things when it comes to the OS, uh, can be very complicated and hard to diagnose. So we have to obviously be very persistent at, when it comes to these complex multifaceted issues uh, to be able to obviously diagnose the actual issue. Questions or doubts? So if we go into our system properties, to view it a little bit better, because that does not look good. Obviously, of course not. Windows has to hide everything nowadays, don't they? And let's play on 10 seconds. And here you are, you have the automatic restart, uncheck. Questions? Doubts? This is dangerous, obviously, right? You can just completely get it stuck. So it's only just to stop it from rebooting. So you can try to diagnose the issue. Next one. Alexa, who's out here? Slide 14. Usually when devices fail to start are not or are not detected by the system, the problem involves drivers. Drivers are associated with devices and they can be accessed by looking at the properties of the device. The three most common tabs of, on the, of an adapter's properties dialog box in Device Manager are General displays the device type, manufacturer, and location. 
It also includes information regarding whether the device is working properly. Driver displays information on the current driver and vehicle signer. Five, co five command buttons allow you to see driver details, uninstall the driver, update the driver, or roll back the driver to the previous driver when a new driver causes an issue. Resources, resources show the system resources in use and whether these are conflicts. Thank you. <clears throat> we can see uh, it can be very difficult. And we know that, as I stated a moment ago, persistence is going to help us in these things. You need to understand that knowing everything at once is obviously not a normal thing. It's, it's not going to be that you're going to just get everything like, like if it was, I don't know, an aha moment. Little by little, with, with practice and or knowledge with these things, some of these symptoms get repetitive, especially when you're in a certain company. Knowing your actual clients themselves uh, can also help us because sometimes uh, they tend to be touching things that they shouldn't be touching. So we need to make sure that we're, we have the confidence to ask them the right questions. Probe, probing as, uh, questions are very helpful when it comes to these matters. So we need to be able to dig in, especially when it comes to any of these problems that are coming. If the problem is a driver itself, obviously try to update the driver. Maybe the driver is, uh, you got a certain patch and now that driver doesn't work with that patch or whatever it is that Windows just got updated with it may be the problem or even worse maybe somebody actually updated the driver and then unfortunately that driver is creating conflicts with windows so we need to boot up obviously on the no last known good boot or last known good configurations what we're calling it nowadays this obviously roll back in time but be very careful when you do this you need to make sure you have backup because if you go to last known good boot it'll go back in time just like Anybody know what it's called in Windows, um, in Apple? I love the name in Apple. Time machine. Yes. <laughs> it's called time machine. So you actually literally go back in time, just like in this one. You'll be erasing everything that happened from that moment until then. Therefore, if they've been working on a very, very difficult file for hours and hours, and they never obviously saved that file, when you go back to last known good boot and you leave it that way, gone. Everything they worked on is gone because it did exactly what you asked. It went back in time and brought back that state of the hard drive. Also, be careful because the more uh, levels of last, uh, of last configuration, the more it's going to take up hard drive space to be able to save that information, to roll back. Questions? Doubts? Our friend Dynamic Link Library Files. Justin. Missing DLL message. One of the more useful error messages you can receive is one indicating a missing DLL file. It's useful because it tells you exactly what's missing. DLL files are shared by various components. If they are missing or corrupt, you will receive an error message whenever you do something that requires a file. Make note of the name of the DLL and its location. You can copy DLLs from another machine if the system are at identical patch levels. Place them in the same location and the problem should be fixed. DLL files are, like I said, uh, the dynamic link library files, obviously as I stated, it must, that application must be installed on the other one. Both of them must have it installed. I can't just go and copy the whole folder and throw everything in there. Be very careful in, in messing with these things. Just look for the file that they've said. Don't go copying everything because sometimes there is configurations in there that have nothing to do with that other computer. So if you copy it, you're going to wind up making something even worse. Just make sure, as I stated, look for where it is, where the location is supposed to be, and then 
go look for it on another computer and just copy and paste. That simple, believe it or not. Any questions or doubts? Most applications have small programs called components that serve the actual main program. These small components are, are the DLL extensions or the dynamic link library files. When an error or message appears with a missing, obviously you can either re reinstall the application, recover from backup if you actually have it. The relationship between the main program and the component might be obviously broken. So maybe going into the Microsoft Management Console and then adding the snap in of uh, the component services to register the component. Obviously that requires you knowing from the actual software developer, which is the complex file that you need to, or services that you need to go and or mess with. Older versions of Windows, you would have to go into regist registry service 32 exe to actually edit that component. That's the old windows compared to the new ones. Same thing, different flavor. Slide 18, Jordan. So can be used by the resource conflicts with another application or a misconfiguration of the service. The first place to start is the event viewer. Uh, that event ID of 7000 with the source of the service control manager, for example. Check the service console to make sure the service is set to start automatically. The solution is to this problem could be to uninstall and reinstall the offending application. Questions or doubts? Next slide, slide eight, Teresa. Symptom compatibility error. Some applications that function on an older operating system such as Windows 2000 or Windows XP experience problems when running on Windows Vista, Windows 7 or Windows 8. The problem is even more acute if the application was made to run on Windows NT or Windows 95, 98. When an application will not function for this reason, there are two solutions. It may even require using both measures to make the application function. Set the application to operate in the mode for which it was created. And the properties dialog box of each application is the compatibility tab. Set the application to run as an administrator. Some older applications must run in the security context of an administrator to function. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I believe we already saw one of these already, but we can look at it again. Find an executable now. There we are. So you can add, run as an administrator itself and go into the properties of it compatibility mode, and you can run this in any version you like. You could obviously also change the reduce the colors in case if it does, cannot do the high colors and it gives it problems. You could obviously also run it on a certain resolution, low resolutions. Any questions or doubts? Slide 20, Justin. Uh, slow system performance. Slow system performance can come from many issues. The first thing to check is the is the presence of a virus. If the system seems to have an overabundance of disk activity, scan it for viruses using a virus program that resides externally on a CD or DVD. 
or memory stick. Defragment the hard drive, the more fragments fragmented it is, the slower disk access will be. Check the space on the hard drive when the partition or volume where the operating system is located becomes full, performance will suffer. Ensure the latest updates are installed. In many cases, updates help to solve performance problems, so make sure they are current. Use the task manager to determine whether a process is using too much memory or CPU or is simply locked up, and if necessary, end the process. Thank you. Any questions or doubts on the slow system performance? Pretty self-explanatory, right? Application issues. Problems when an application may be caused by the actual application. Believe it or not, hardware, operating system, data, and other applications can cause that. And lastly, our ID10Ts will happen. Users could cause the problem themselves in, in the actual application to crash. That all depends. So we need to be able to diagnose these various actual things one at a time before we can actually get to the resolution. Any questions? Step for solving the actual issues. Obviously, step one, interview the user and back up their data. Ask the user always to try to reproduce the steps that they went through that created it to create the problem. Obviously, try to reboot. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Maybe they just need a refresh on the Windows. I've seen users that won't even turn it off, their computers for over a month or two. That's not a good idea. Obviously, you want to restart. Usually it will restart, and a lot of the times that they get the updates, it forces them to restart on that beautiful Thursdays that they send out these patches. It's not always. Second step, error messages, the web logs might help, obviously. Check Windows 7, 8 Action Center. That's a little flag that should be somewhere in your right-hand corner. Search for the, uh, the web itself and look at the event viewer. See if it actually shows you anything in reference to the application itself. Consider that the data or the application it may be actually uh, corrupt. The ap application settings may have been changed, so they might be wrong. Uninstall and reinstall the application may fix it, but not always. Step four, consider outside interference. It could be a virus that's actually creating the problem and attacking the program. The system resources may be low. They maybe have 500 windows, like I like to see a lot of times, there's a whole bunch of windows open down there, and then they try to open up this program, and boom, <clears throat> they just crash the whole system because obviously it cannot handle the load. Uh, services that may uh, fail to start, as we said, the service is not on and the application requires for that service to be on, it will not work. Bad memory obviously will create that issue because as soon as it tries to access the address in the memory, the specific one that's bad, boom, down, right there. No ifs, ands, or buts. The moment something gets into the memory and is unable to be processed, usually Windows will give you an error and or restart, giving you a blue screen. A background uh, program may be obviously conflicting with the application itself. So we need to check also if they have anything running in the background. And lastly, consider that Windows might be actually the problem. Windows is so great. A problem with the application might be solved just by updating or restoring Windows system files. Download uh, uh, the Windows updates may be one of the other ones or use the file checker to verify and replace any system files. Lastly, use a restore point as your last resort. Any questions or doubts on application issues or errors?
Next one, hanging applications. Jordan. When an application hangs, use task manager to end it. If task manager can't end it, use the task list and task kill commands. Task list command returns the process. Re what? Returns the process identifier. identifier. Yeah, the, pro the PID, the process ID. Uh -huh. The open up in my tab. Task kill command uses the process ID to kill the process. Example, use task kill more to list running processes. Note the PID of the processes you want to end. Enter task kill if PID 2212 to forcefully kill the process. Thank you. Any questions or doubts? So that's task kill slash F to force slash PID for the, to let it know that you're giving it the ID, colon and the ID itself. That's the syntax. Next slide. Carlos. <clears throat> when, a f uh, when a file fails, all right, give me one second, hold on. When a file fails to open, the application is non stud or the file extension is wrong. A program associated with a file extension is called a default program. Use the file programs window to change the program associated with a file extension. Data sources open database connectivity, ODBC tool. It can be used to allow data files to be, to be connected to applications that they normally would not use. Okay. Okay. Any questions? questions. Everyone understand what's the what the file what they're talking about here the default program. Basically, that is what Windows extension will associate it with. Um, you don't even need the extension. You can just say, "Hey, this specific thing. Whenever you have this, I want you to open it with that." No, you need the extension. Unfortunately, that is what it associated with. Be careful with with uh, your definition there, especially if you're going to take the test. Without the extension, there is nothing. The extension is the .docx .exe .jpg. That is my extension. So it'll associate all JPEGs to, where's open with? There he is. So it'll grab all files with that extension and I can say always use this app to open the .jpg files. That's what he does. And I come here and I change it and I make it Adobe or whatever I feel like making it, it will always open it after that with that application. It requires the extension to know what it is. Questions or doubts? Next one, file fails to open. When a file fails to open, change the program used to open the program. So basically, if we come in here into the actual control panel, it'll also have the whole list of the applications that it's supposed to be able to use. So if I come into my control panel, And ooh, they, they hide it now. Ouch. Mm. Take it to hit it in here. Mm. Feature. So we'll see here on the on the left side all of my files themselves and what I can actually associate those files too, as a whole list. 
each one. So you notice the BKF, if I wanted to choose what it runs with, right now nothing's gonna run with those files. Any questions or doubts? I was under the default programs and set your default programs in Windows 10. <laughs> Available tools for troubleshooting Windows. You have your BIOS, you have SFC, you have your memory diagnostics, your logs inside your actual event viewer, your system recovery options, you have repair disks. Obviously, there's patches, and you can uh, boot up always into safe mode to see if that uh, allows you to go in and try to remove drivers or whatever might be creating the conflict. You have MS config, or you have the CLI itself that allows you to do a plethora of commands to try to diagnose the issue. So, overall, We've seen uh, many issues that may actually arise within Windows. We also discover, uh, discussed a little bit on the common uh, resolutions. So can anybody tell me how can we use persistence then to help us solve these common issues from what we've discussed? I guess just keep trying. Just go through steps from least intrusive to most intrusive until you get it done. All right? Just be persistent. We know that we're not going to know everything at once. It's normal. Obviously, it's beneficial also because we're going to be learning. But never take a challenge like this as something just to give up on, especially when we know that our clients need help with these issues. We need to be motivated to work hard and try to resolve this problem. Even if we don't know ourselves, we need to reach out to the resources, be internal or on the web, wherever we can find these things. Obviously be very careful downloading any application that the web is suggesting to you, especially in a company environment. You don't wanna go and download shareware or any other type of software that you're not allowed to. Now let's imagine that you need to solve one of these problems issues right now and you're working with a very difficult client you're not sure how to solve the problem how might you use teamwork in this situation you got to consult with somebody if, for things that you're not fully sure about maybe they could help you in a sense that they know more about the problem than you do right Never be afraid, man. That's the awesome thing that I love about IT field, man. If if you are a real IT person, you always work as a team. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Because like you said, some people may be stronger in telecom while the other ones are very good in applications. And some of them are maybe very good on servers. So everybody has their little niche that they can actually uh, lean on. So don't be afraid to ask questions from your team. If they are a true IT person, they're going to be willing to help you. This always happens in IT. There's so much wide range of stuff that's out there that not everybody knows everything. Questions or doubts? So, UEFI, as you see here, here's a little nice, beautiful, little GUI representation. It's the first line of defense and or attack towards the actual problem. You can diagnose many components within the actual UEFI BIOS. Keeping the current firmware obviously can help you out, but be careful. As we know, when we're upgrading firmware, we need to be very careful of those things. First thing we can use is obviously memory diagnostics. In the command prompt, we can do MD schedule exe to uh, uh, allow it to do the memory diagnostics. If Windows desktop will not load, press the space bar during the boot 
and select Windows Memory Diagnostics. So when the little, right before the flag comes out, try pressing the, the, the actual thing. And then you, I think you also have eight, F8 that actually stops the process. If you cannot boot the hard drive, boot obviously to a DVD or, and or a USB stick to try to repair your computer using the, the diagnostics within the actual CD or the USB stick that you're booting up with. Questions? Doubts? SFC is a system file checker. This is obviously the purpose to protect system files and keep caches current. So it actually will go up and replace any system file that's either corrupt or needs to be replaced if it's missing. Automatically uh, verifies the system's files after reboot to see if there's any changes or unprotected copy, run SFC, elevated command, which, the, which is the SFC scan now. And if, if it won't run using the above command, try the SFC scan once. We'll scan files immediately after your next reboot. That's what that will do. Any question between the scan now or scan once? Will this fix an application like my web browser? Will it fix my web browser? Will it fix access? Will it fix Excel? No. Correct. System file checker says it in his name, so looking at the system files only. Your logs are your friend, believe it or not. Although annoying to read, there's a plethora of log events coming out. All operation systems collect this information and have it stored in log files. There are typically log files in different components, such as your security, your application logs, or system logs. So if you're having a problem with an application, you go over here, obviously. And or you can go into the system or security log afterwards if you can't find anything in there. These files can be used to troubleshoot operating system issues and events related to usual, unusual or usual in the system log. The log files can be found always within Windows Event Viewer. Questions or doubts? So he separates it in there in the Event Viewer. System recovery process. So when you come up into this actual beautiful window, there's two of them here. This is the old one versus the new one here. You have your startup repair disks, you have your system restore, you have your system image recovery, you have Windows Diagnostics from here, and you have CLI. Any questions? I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can, if I can't see it very well. What is the uh, complete difference from system restart and then system image recovery? Is it similar to like virtual, like screenshot for system image recovery? System image recovery will recover your computer using the system image. It's an image file, while restore point is a restore point. Image of your computer, just like a sys prep image versus a restore point. You know the, the sysprep images files? I don't know what you mean by system prep. Sysprep, we learned that it actually prepares the machine and creates an image of the machine. Erases the SID and, and you can create a brand new name. So when we're doing the Pixie Boots, and or any of these software unattended installs, that image file is what it uses. The image file is a file, you can say a picture, lack of a better word, of your current state of the computer. 
And think of it as a factory image also is an image file. When you, rest when you go and you restore back from the HP's original image, that's an image. A restore say, point, a restore point. Is it safe to say that it's similar to how a virtual machine does a snapshot? No. no? An, image, an image file is an image file. Snapshot is a snapshot, which is a snapshot of your current state, similar to being put to hibernate. Snapshot is basically your, it'll be similar to going into a actual uh, virtual machine and making a copy of it. Now you have an identical copy of the image. Not making sense? Uh, so, kinda. It's just I'm thinking about virtual machines. They're kind of similar, but I'm getting it wrong, I guess. An image file is one file compressed, while this here is a state of the files itself of, uh, of time. Um, completely different because here there is no image file it's just restoring from a given time no so <laughs> I'm One. just trying to make better sense of it because I'm thinking like in the virtual machine, like a system restore sounds like an actual screenshot. An image is just the image that you save, basically. But a snapshot, right? you do realize the snapshot is only a frozen state of that image. I mean, of that Windows. It's like a hibernate. So a system restore wouldn't be a good example either. A system restore is just restoring all the configurations on how it was. Like the keys set up of his registry, for example. Keeps everything. Uh, we can just skip this one for now and then I'll look it up later because I'm the kind of person that needs to understand, okay, exactly everything i just need to know like extra detail it is it. technically a system restore point is technically a snapshot technically of your whole entire computer system settings system settings itself what a system restore is you're looking at it in a virtual machine that's the best i can complain uh, compare it to it is a snapshot of your entire computer system's settings, the settings on it. While the system image recovery is the whole image of the computer. That makes sense now? Yeah. Okay. There we are. System recovery options, startup repair. It's a utility that serves as a do-it-all option when you run it. It repairs a corrupt registries by accessing a backup copy on the HD, restores critical boot files. It'll restore critical uh, system driver files, roll back any non-working drivers, uninstall incompatible service packs or patches. It runs check disks. It runs a memory test on the RAM and start repair fixes almost any Windows boot. Startup repair fixes almost any Windows boot issue. Questions or doubt on a startup repair, repair utility?
doubts. System recovery options. So system re uh, restore is a utility that enables you to go back to a point when the computer was working. You'll see here, it has a plethora of different dates and times. And it lets you know the description of what happened. So right before you install the driver or something, it lets you know what was the description of what happened. So here was a Windows update that came in that took a, an actual snapshot of all the computer settings, all the settings in it. And it'll restore it from that point. Any questions or doubts? System recovery options. The system image recovery is a utility that enables to restore the system from an image backup, a whole image file, a backup of the whole thing. And it'll obviously bring it from that point. Any questions? On Windows 10, how do you set up a recovery image? How to set up a recovery image in Windows 10? Yeah. Again, update. Come on, I'm typing. Oh, based on Google, it's telling me it's just like Windows 7, actually. Same, yeah. It shouldn't be. No, that's what. Yeah, I think Windows 8 is the one that doesn't have backup like that. I know that Windows 8, there was something on, on the book about Windows 8 is different for recovery. You just type in recovery and it shows up. Oh yeah, that's simple. We have recovery. Reset the PC. And that's, should be in here. We got backup in here also. We got recovery, activations, but I don't have all full rights, so it's not going to let me get all the issues. I mean, all the. I can't see a screen, but I think I found it. It's advanced oh, copy tool, Corrated Recovery Drive. Correct. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, Thanks, because it says Recovery Drive, not image. Is as simple as just typing recovery drive. <laughs> oh, so is recovery drive is, is the equivalent to, well, is the same thing as image in this case, or is that different? I believe a recovery drive is just that, but I don't have admin access. It's not letting me into everything in here. So I do apologize. I'm trying to get into that spot where it's supposed to let me see it. But it won't let me. I don't have admin rights. Should be under uh, update and recovery. And then in your advanced uh, section, it should be in there. Okay. I don't see the option for virtual machine. On the virtual machine? Oh, okay. Yeah, because I'm looking at it right now, and the only option I can see similar to that is create a recovery drive. All right. 
Let's go to a break now. It's already 10.22. And then I'll open up my uh, 